five yard line, an interception in the end zone, and two Matt Sullivan field goals hitting the uprights kept the game close and left coach Jim Butterfield shaking his head. This week, Butterfield must once again choose a starting quarterback. Senior Tom Pasquale was impressive, but is injured and is questionable for today's game. Todd Wilkowski was ineffective last week, and Jim Gibbons had a big touchdown run in the fourth quarter. However, today's opponent, St. Lawrence, has a solid quarterback, junior Chris Phelps, who leads a strong passing game, which will test the Bombers' secondary early and often. It's the Bombers versus the Saints, next here on ICB-TV. <laughs> Football is brought to you by Bolton's Donuts, 7th and West State Street in Ithaca. Good afternoon and welcome to a rainy South Hill field here at where Ithaca College will play St. Lawrence on homecoming weekend. I'm Greg Gavich. Alongside me is Neil Brooks. And Neil, the Bombers with a 17-7 win over Albany State last week, a game that looked more impressive on the stat sheet than it did on the scoreboard. Yeah, the Bombers really dominated in the stats book. They had 500 total yards uh, offense uh, and time of possession. They really dominated. The Bombers had a couple key turnovers. And Tom Pasquale, the starting quarterback, was injured in the first game of the season. Once again, Todd Wolkowski will get the start this afternoon. Yeah, it's just like last year. Pasquale gets injured against Albany in the opening game. Here he's against St. Lawrence. Uh, He's a veteran quarterback. We should see a fine job out of Todd Wilkowski. And Wilkowski's first ever start was against St. Lawrence last season. Keith Molinich, the sophomore fullback last week, had a tremendous game against the Great Danes. He had 122 yards, more than anyone probably expected from him. Uh, really bowled his way through the line. He's, he's really showing his power last weekend. Now for St. Lawrence, they have the, the troubles at quarterback for the Bombers. Number 11, Chris Phelps. He's a super runner and a great passer. He is. He's, uh, he's uh, really had some good stats. As a freshman, he was Rookie of the Year. He's a junior now. He's got three, uh, two years under his belt already. He's, he's a solid quarterback. Now, for the Bombers, the secondary is going to be the key this afternoon, led by Craig Penson. Uh, veteran, we have veteran uh, uh, D-backs back there. The really quality D-backs, uh, we shouldn't have a problem, I don't think. Now, our own Jay Harrow had a chance to talk with St. Lawrence coach Joe Kimball about this afternoon's game. Thanks, Greg. And, Coach? Last week, you played a very tough team in Union, and what turned out to be a defensive struggle in the first half ended up being a heartbreaker in the end. Uh, your reactions to the game as the final score ended up being uh, played in the last 42 seconds. Right. It shouldn't have come down to the last 42 seconds. Our defense played a great football game, and, and offensively, you know, we did the same thing as, as Ithaca did last, last week offensively. We struggled, turned the ball over, uh, didn't capitalize uh, in good field, on good field position, and... Uh, and uh, we got nipped in the end. It was too bad because I think we are the better team, uh, and, and it, it, we came up short on the scoreboard. What do you look for in today's game as an improvement to last week? Offensively, we've got to catch our offense up to where our defense is. If we do that, if our defense stays where they are, playing the way they are, real consistent, solid, aggressive football, and our offense takes a, a step up, it should be a hell of a football game. Finally today, you're not playing in the most ideal playing conditions. Uh, it's raining consistently throughout the day, and the turf is a little slippery. Uh, what kind of uh, adjustments are you going to make for your team? I don't think at this point, if it doesn't do any more than what it's doing right now, just a, a light drizzle, uh, you're not going to play on a better surface, number one. And number two is, uh, uh, you know, I, I think we've, we've needed the rain, so it's going to soak right into the ground. I don't think that's going to be a factor unless we get a downpour. Okay, Coach, thank you very much. Good luck in tonight's ball game. Homecoming weekend crowd still filing into South Hill Field, expecting an exciting contest, and we'll have the opening kickoff between the Bombers and the St. Lawrence Saints after this.
Back here at Southfield Field, the rain has stopped, and the St. Lawrence Saints have won the toss, Neil, and it, they're going to elect to receive it, and I think it's very important for them to, to get something going on this first possession. It definitely is uh, for the for the uh, Saints to come out and uh, really come out and, and uh, try and get a quick score in, just get a momentum boost. It has to do a lot for their morale as well if they can score early. Exactly. It, it would be nice. It's a homecoming crowd here. It's, they, had, they had to travel a little ways, and uh, it would be a good morale boost. The Saints send back deep Mike Abel, along with Joe Carlson, to return the opening kickoff from Joe Johnston, who does had the kickoff duties last week and had two touchbacks and looked very impressive kicking the ball off. Yeah, he had some real boomers out there last week. The Saints dressed in the white uniforms with the red pants and the brown numbers with red trim. Bombers in that navy blue with white. Fans getting into the ball game are ready for the opening kickoff. It's again St. Lawrence. Saints coming off a tough 14-13 defeat to Union in the last minute of the game. Bombers, 17-7 victors over Albany State in their season opener. And we're underway. High kick, it'll be taken by Abel around the 10. He's gonna try and go up the middle. Now cuts back to the near side across the 30 and is brought down and the ball comes loose and the Bombers have recovered. Ithaca recovers a fumble on the opening kickoff. Doug Mahar on the fumble recovery and a big break already. That's definitely gonna help the Bombers right there. Boy, Joe Kimball must be scratching his head fumbling the opening kickoff. That is a killer. It really hurts. The Bombers have good field position now. It'd be real good for the Bombers to see that, you know, to get it right in right now. Todd Wolkowski will call signals to open things up for the Bombers this afternoon. Chris Lakata starting instead of Dave Seidel. And Wolkowski looks to throw it, bat it down, incomplete by Mike Krusky. The inside linebacker with a good play there. Two new starters in the backfield. Lakata got the start at the halfback spot, and Wolkowski at quarterback. Right, uh, Lakata, uh, Lakata, we thought, uh, we thought we'd see Seidel out there, but I think he had a hip injury during the practice this week. There's the Ithaca offensive line, Tim Rice, Tom Finner, and John Fitzgerald, Pete Burns, and Evan Marcus across the front five. All five are seniors. It'll be second at Ted now for the Bobbers in St. Lawrence territory. It's Ken Hamill on the near side. He had four catches last week. Wachowski drops the snap. And dives on the ball, a mistake by the Bombers, maybe due to the wet turf. Yeah, I think we are seeing the effects of the wet ball right now. St. Lawrence fumbled it on the opening kickoff, and Wilkowski dropped it there. Todd Wilkowski, the starting quarterback, Keith Molinich and Chris Lakata in the backfield. Scott Van Dyke, Kenny Hamill are the wide receivers. Kevin McCaffrey is the Bombers' tight end. Van Dyke split to the far side, Hamill to the near side. Third, we'll call it 12 from the 35. Opening minute of play, no score, Bombers and St. Wilkowski wants to throw again. Has McCaffrey open, through his hands, incomplete. So the Bombers offense sputters on the opening possession. We saw Wilkowski come out and try and throw right away. Pretty gutsy call by Coach Butterfield, knowing was, there was a wet ball, but uh, almost com completed that for a couple yards. And we had a flag on the Bombers there. There's a St. Lawrence defensive line. They go with a 5-2 set. Chris Lake, Mike Warden, Todd Payton, Pat Moylan, and Jim Limerick across the front. Good size there, 250, 240 they average across the front line. Todd Smith and Mike Krusky are the linebackers. Have a hold five, two, on the offense. The penalty will be declined. It's going to be the fourth down. Frank DiOrio, the official, giving us the call. A holding call on the Bombers. So it'll be fourth and long yardage. Joe Williams comes on to punt. And this is a tough decision for the coaching staff when you get around the 35-yard line. Punt or you go for it. It's hard to say. I mean, even a, a field goal is a possibility. Williams will kick it away. And decent pressure on him. St. Lawrence and no one back deep to receive. And it just gets out of the reach of Joe Palladino, who is down there, goes into the end zone for a touchback. And St. Lawrence will get the ball back. So the Bombers get the fumble, but fail to capitalize. Yeah, hopefully it won't be the same as last weekend with a uh, uh, lack of uh, progress there. But uh, looks like... So the Saints will take over at the 20-yard line. First and ten. Rain falling again now. Chris Phelps is the quarterback. Duddy Rogers in the backfield with Eddie McShann. Phelps is going to look to throw. Pressure.
pressure on him, now pitches it out to McShan, who's wrapped up in the backfield for a loss. And give credit to Jeff Deke on that play. A real good pass rush by Jeff Deke on that, really uh, stretched, you know, hurt the play there. So St. Lawrence came out looking to throw, and Phelps had nowhere to go. He was sacked eight times last week against Union. That really hurt him last week. Second and long yardage for the Saints. Starting deep in their own territory from their own 16. Kurt Lanning split to the far side. Split on the other side is Jim Curry. Along with him is Mike Smith, the tight end. And now we have an eye backfield with Duddy Rogers. Along with Eddie McShane. Phelps again running the option. Pitches out to McShane. He's got some room to the outside. Now it's met by Pat Moynihan and wrapped up around the 20 yard line for a short gain. Gets back the loss. It'll be third and 10. Moynihan had five tackles last week uh, with a real impressive showing. He's doing a real good job right now, keeping the corners contained again this week. Phelps looks a little sloppy with that pitch, like he's not comfortable running the option. It could be he's not comfortable with the option or it's not comfortable with the wet turf. And the ball getting wet in the rain here, you might see a lot of problems with that as the clock has been stopped and now there's a ladder <laughs> leaning up against it, which will lead us to believe that there's something wrong with the scoreboard. And now it'll be third and 11 as we try and get this problem corrected. Officials huddling up. There's a St. Lawrence offensive line. Rick Pound, the offensive tackle. Mike Flanagan, Eric Manning is the center. Jim Shumway and Charlie Esty are on the right side of the line. There's their backs. Chris Phelps, the dangerous quarterback. Mike Abel is the fullback. Eddie McShann is the tailback. Kurt Lanning and Mike Harris start wide receiver. And Mike Smith is the Saints tight end. Third and 11 now for St. Lawrence. Mike Harris in motion. And it gives to the fullback, Sonny Rogers, who gets across the 20 and is met there hard by Dan Feldman. Now bring up a punting situation. You got Nick, Nick Ismailoff back there. He, had a, he, was doing, he did a good job last, last week with the uh, punt return. Ron Fasora is the punter for the Saints. Last week, six punts for an average of 30 yards. His Maloff averaged 12.8 yards return in four tries last week against Albany State. Good snap. Pressure's on, but Fasora gets it away. A high end over end kick. And His Maloff calls for the fair catch and makes it at the 47. And the referee gets hit there. But he manages to keep his footing. Got a flag on the play. And we have a holding call against St. Lawrence. We'll see what the Bombers do. It was only a 25-yard kick, so they may decline this one. But it doesn't look like it. Uh, it looks like they're going to uh, let him punt it again. Hope for a return, I guess. Or a, with the wet conditions, maybe a drop ball or a block kick. Wouldn't be surprised with Lee Byrne in there. Byrne blocked a field goal last week, and they are going to make the Saints kick it again. So the march off against the Saints. We have a holding on the kicking team. We're going to enforce the penalty and repeat the fourth down. So Vassor will have to get it away again, and it looks like he almost had that one blocked the first time. I think it was Lee Byrne who got in there that time. It looked like he was almost offside. He was in there so fast. Byrne is number 38. Watch for him on the far side of your picture on the far end. Joe Williams is on the near end. He also got in there on the last one. Both have good height with those stretched arms. They can get good hands on the ball. Good snap, and Sora gets it away. A low kick. Ismailoff's going to have a chance to return this one. Taken at the 40. Cuts across the 30. And inside the 30, again, the Bombers with super field position to start the first, the second drive of the day. They capitalized on that penalty, and now they're on the 28-yard line. Ismailoff, again, you know, not breaking these returns and getting that 10 or 11 yards every time. Right, he seems to find the hole pretty well and gets right up there. The Bombers will take over inside the 30 at the 28. 11.39 to play, first quarter. No score as of yet. It's again, didn't run the ball in the first three plays. We'll see what they do here. There's 
the give to Molinich, and he tries to find some room to the left side. Gets about to the 25, and that's all messed by a host of things. Yeah, he got Mets standing up on that one. Not much of a gain on that at all. St. Lawrence had a strong defensive outing last week against Union. As it was a 14-13 contest they lost in the last couple of minutes, Saints defense showed a lot of strength in that contest. Second and seven now. Hamill and Van Dyke both to the near side. On the counter play, Lakata has it, looking to get some room to the outside, and he is brought down out of bounds. Good play by, made by Mike Krusky, the senior inside linebacker, to string that one out. String the right, start it right out to the uh, sideline. Gave us no gain at all on that one. Lakata had only two carries last week for six yards and limited action. Replacing Dave Seidel today, who is out with a bit of an injury. I guess he's got a, he's got a problem with his hip, I've heard. Uh, I saw him before the game. He looks capable. He looks like he could be running if they needed him. It'll be third and seven for the Bombers at the 24-yard line, we'll call it. Third and six. Wachowski wants to throw. Looking to the sideline for Scott Parker, who almost makes a fantastic over-the-shoulder grab, but can't hang on. Exactly, almost a great grab. He had the hands there, it was a possibility. Almost out of bounds, would have been a good, good gain. Just didn't happen. They'll bring up fourth down. The Bombers offense doesn't get anything going on that possession either, but with the field position, Matt Sullivan will come on to try a 41-yard field goal. And Matt did something last week that I don't think I've ever seen. He hit both uprights on two different occasions. <laughs> Let's hope we don't see that again. Scott Barker will do the holding. St. Lawrence, everyone up there trying to block it. High snap, kick is up, and it's way short. Sullivan got almost nothing on that ball. And the Saints hold once again, and there's no score. That was almost blocked right there. Uh, they really had some good penetration there and almost blocked it. It looks like Sullivan may have had a little trouble getting that foot set in the wet grass. That could be it. And it, he also may have been uh, intimidated by the defensive lines rushing in. So the Saints hold once again, and they'll take over. As his off and on drizzle is lightening up once again. High formation in the backfield. Eddie McShan, the tailback, had 100 yards rushing last week against Union on 19 carries. <laughs> And he'll get the pitch on the option, and wow, he's going nowhere. <laughs> there were four bombers just waiting for that pitch, including Matt Herbst and Joe Palladino, who's in there replacing Pat Moynihan. Looks like the bombers really read that play well. They knew it was coming, and they got it pretty good. Rob Finneran stretched that out, too. Second and 12 now. As we figured out what the scoreboard problem is, it says second and 91. That is a problem. <laughs> I don't think they have that quite that far to go. And they'll try that option again. Phelps will turn it in himself and go nowhere once again. And it'll be third and long yardage. Saints want to establish that option, but they just don't look like they're comfortable doing it. Looks like the bomber defense is just ready and they, they can read every play very well. He had defenders standing right in his face on that one. You can see it with the Bombers offense with Wilkowski, Pasquale, and Gibbons. They all have run the option so long, and you look at Chris Phelps, he looks totally confused running this. Seems like he, uh, he's really a passing quarterback, and he's not, he's not real prepared for this option game. Backs are now split. Kurt Lanning is to the near sideline, set in wide receiver position. Third and 14. Phelps rolls left. Dumps it off, incomplete intended for Mike Smith, the tight end. Coverage there made by Palladino, and the Saints will have to punt. We're seeing no offense thus far. <laughs> Not yet. Might be a little timid with the field being so wet. Either team, really. Saints have negative yardage total. The Bombers don't have much mo more than that. About three or four yards. <laughs> Ismailoff and Van Dyke waiting the kick from Persora. We had a poor kick off last time. This one's a little better. Van Dyke takes this one at midfield. They'll try and cut it through the middle. He has a hole across the 40. Now that tries to put a move on and is brought down around the 37 by Duddy Rogers. 
nice steps in there. He did a good job running that one back. Good block by Nick on that one, too. Once again, super field position for the Bombers. See if they can capitalize on it this time. There's Todd Wilkowski in the huddle. First career start was last year up at St. Lawrence and led the Bombers to a 28-14 win. And he'll keep it on the option, turns it across the 30, breaks a tackle there, and gets the biggest gain of the day for about eight yards. That was a smart keep. He saw the opening and just, he knew he was going to get six or seven yards there, and he'd actually stretch it out to eight. At least second and two now for the Bombers. Wilkowski had a 51-yard touchdown run in that game at St. Lawrence last year, which the Bombers won 28 to 14. He ran for 50 yards total, threw six pat through 11 passes, completed six for 65 yards. He'll run the option here. The pitch is to Molinich, and he's got a hole across 25. Fumbles the ball, and there's Mike Krusky to hop on it, and the turnover goes to St. Lawrence. Guess it's wetter than we thought down there. It's proven to be a real problem for both teams today so far. There must be something about getting inside that 20-yard line because as soon as he crossed the 20, he dropped the ball. Seemed to just slip right out of his hands. He had a good run going. And once again, the Saints are... The Bombers have had opportunities deep in St. Lawrence territory. Not quite as good as last week's opportunities, but nonetheless, they're not capitalizing. Help gives to Rogers through the middle of the line. He goes nowhere. Maybe a yard. It'll be second and nine. Deke just burst right through the line there, number 62. Mike Abel and Mike Smith bring in the play for the Saints. Rain continues to fall. Umbrellas out all over the place here at Southfield Field. There's the fullback again. This time it was Mike Abel. He goes nowhere through the left side of the line. And it'll be third and long yardage. Looks like the entire Bomber defense was on that one. Looks like a real slow game going on out there right now. Halfway through the first quarter, 7.30 left, and there is no score, although St. Lawrence does have three points on the board. Lanning and Curry split to the near side. Mike Harris split to the far side. Phelps wants to throw. Here comes Fitterin from behind. Now Phelps going to try and keep it. He drops the ball. And now the Bombers will have it inside the 15. It's Rob Finneran recovering the fumble by Chris Phelps. And another mistake. Some real intense pressure there from Ralph Jones, Rob Finneran, and uh, Palladino, I think, was also in there. The Saints offensive line, they have good size up front. 260, 255 at the tackles, but last week, eight sacks, and must be one of their biggest weaknesses. See the uh, Bomber uh, defensive line, the young unit. You see what they can do against them this week. Lakata and Molinic both in the backfield. Bombers with a golden opportunity. There's Molinic through the left side, pulling his way forward. And now is stood up around the eight yard line by Mike Krusky once again. Just refusing to stop on that one. Gain of four. It'll be second and six. The rain falling, the, this has to give Ithaca an advantage. St. Lawrence likes to throw the ball normally, whereas Ithaca can just use that power running game. Yeah, I think it's definitely gonna alter their game plan today. Second and six from the eight. Campbell to his near side. Same play, Molinich to the left side. He's gonna be close to the first down. I wouldn't be surprised to see that dive, exact same player going the opposite direction on the next play. And the officials will bring out the change to measure. Bombers close to the first down here around the two yard line they had to get to. 
And as you said, just want to use the mammoth offensive line to your advantage. Exactly. Looks like they're going to be going with the double tight end set. Pino's in there. Chains are stretched, and it's a first down for the Bombers. So it'll be first and goal from around the two-yard line, we'll call it. Chance for Ithaca to get on the board. Seems to be early and the exact duplicate of last week's game with the Bombers having great field position throughout the first quarter. Double tight end set, Wilkowski brings them out. Lakata and Molinich are in the backfield. There's Molinich as Wilkowski slips, giving him the ball, and he's stacked up behind the line of scrimmage. Not but a real good handoff there by Todd Wilkowski. I, I think it might have been better for him to hold that, and he could have trotted right into the end zone from the looks of it up here. So the second and goal now from about the three. St. Lawrence digging in, trying to hold off another bomber opportunity. Now McCaffrey comes off the line of scrimmage. Still two tight ends in there. There's the give to Malinich through the right side, and he's into the end zone for the touchdown. from three yards out. Puts the Bombers on the board first. It's 6-0 Ithaca. Good job by Molinich again. Just powering his way through the, through the line there and doing whatever he wants to do. Sullivan on to attempt the extra point and out of the hold of Scott Barker. Kick is up, and it is through the uprights, and good. So with 5.09 left first quarter, Ithaca takes a 7-0 lead. Bombers finally capitalizing, getting seven points on the board early in the game. And the fumble recovery around the 15-yard line by Rob Finneran set this touchdown up. Here's the replay. Little tight call. There's Molinich heading his way over the line. So the Bombers take a 7-0 lead here at the wet South Hill Field. Johnson set to kick it off again. And we'll see if St. Lawrence can hang on to the kickoff this time. Seems like it is going to be a problem today. Still coming down the rain. Abel and Carlson back deep again for the Saints. Johnson kicks it away. Abel takes it at the 10 once again. Tries to go up the middle with it. Gets across the 30 and bowls his way forward. Where he's met by Dan O'Hara. Bomber's showing a little bit of a weakness on the special teams there. Both times, uh, the Saints seem to do a good job uh, with their wedge and opening it up and uh, finally getting a, a single tackle in the open field. It's not what you want. So St. Lawrence gets a little better field position here at their own 33 to start their third drive of the day. Phelps runs the option, and he's thrown down by Ralph Jones before he even had a chance to pitch it. Ralph Jones was real inspired about that one, very happy with himself. Tell you, Neil, I don't understand what St. Lawrence is doing. You see Phelps in the, in the past, just a great scrambler, a great thrower, and they're running the option game, and he just doesn't look comfortable doing it at all. He doesn't look comfortable at all, and our defensive line is really capitalizing on it, reading him very quickly. Second and long yardage again for the Saints. He wants to run the option again, and he'll keep the ball this time, and he's met and thrown down 
in there is Dan Feldman along with Matt Hatley. A short gain once again, and it'll be third and long yardage. Again, a good, good job by the Bomber defense. Saints seem to be real, playing really conservative here in the early going. Third and 13, around the 30. Phelps looks to throw, has time, goes over the middle and completes a Kurt Landing for the first down around the 48 yard line. Problems there at the uh, Ithaca secondary. Bombers everywhere, but they didn't seem to get to the ball. Gain of 18 on the play. Landing makes his third catch of the season. One of the top receivers in upstate New York. So Phelps completes his first pass of the day and gets the Saints their first first down. He goes back to the ground gain. That's Duddy Rogers through the middle. He gets across midfield, and we have a flag down. I would guess that might be a face mask. Ralph Jones looks upset. And we have an illegal block against St. Lawrence. So the Saints had the ball across midfield, but this one will be called back due to the penalty. Graphic. Bombers scoring drive, 11 yards on four plays in a little less than two minutes. Keith Molinich with the three-yard touchdown run for his first career touchdown. I think we'll see many more of those in his career. An illegal chop block on the offensive team. 15-yard penalty. We're going to repeat the first down. So there's a costly penalty for the Saints. It really kills the, what they got on the last play, that pass play. It does, and it, it's, a, it's a dangerous play. That really could upset the defensive line, and they don't want to upset the defensive line right now. Bombers really winning the uh, battle in the trenches in there right now. It'll be first and 25 for the Saints. Three minutes left, first quarter. Bombers on top, seven zip. Phelps on the draw to Machan. Another flag down. He has a lot of room. Gets across the 40. A gain of about nine. Once again, a flag down. Flags on both sides of the field. Preliminary indication is offsides against Ithaca. And I'd look for St. Lawrence to take that one. You think so? Wouldn't be surprised to see him passing a little bit more soon. If they take the penalty, it'll be first and 20. If they decline it, it'll be second and around 18. We had a penalty offside on a blue team. It'll be declined, second down. So it's second and we'll call it 15. 15, long 15 yards. I thought they'd take the penalty and go with a first and 20, give them three more cracks at it. But Joe Kim will take the play It'll be second and 15. Phelps on that option. Now steps up in the pocket, looks to throw it. Batted down. Now it's caught by a lineman. No, it's not. It looks like the number 75, Charlie Esty, dove and caught the ball. But he trapped it. It'll be third and 15. Good job by Chris Coloca, number 28, batting that ball down. He had to jump a little bit for that one, too. Phelps ran down the line like he's looking to pitch the ball. Stepped back and tried to throw it. And it was stuffed. He really does look uneasy out there. He's not comfortable with the, the offense today, I don't think. High formation in the backfield. McShan now the up back on third and 15. Here comes the blitz through the middle of the line. Phelps is in trouble. Slips and is going to be sacked. Around his own 25. Pressure by Matt Hatley and Matt Herbst. And it's fourth and a long way to go. <laughs> Good pressure by the Bombers. Phelps tried to scramble away there and slipped and fell. And I don't think he was going anywhere anyway. Better for him that he slipped and fell than got hit by Matt Hadley. An intimidating figure. Here's the replay. 
Phelps going back to pass. See Herbst, Hatley, Rob Finneran, bring him right down. And, and Restore gets off a terrible kick. It'll be down around the 38-yard line, an 11-yard punt. And the Bombers have super field position again. I think they've been the, uh, on their side of the field in scoring position uh, every every uh, possession this, this game. The ball has not crossed the midfield stripe into Bombers territory yet, except when the was kicked off. Right. So Wolkowski brings him out. A little under two minutes to play, first quarter, 7 nothing Ithaca. Wolkowski looks to throw, timing pattern, looking for Kenny Hamill. He's got him wide open. He makes a grab at the 10, and Hamill dives into the end zone. Touchdown, Bombers! Wilkowski to Ken Hamill on a 38-yard scoring strike, and the Bombers are up 13-0. Hamill ran a real good pattern, got out there again. He really is the, the deep threat for the Bombers this year. He had four catches for 83 yards last week. And one touchdown, and here he's got another touchdown today. So just like that. As you see on the replay, there's Hamill on the right side of your screen. Long ball, and Kenny Hamill grabs it and drags him into the end zone for a touchdown. Sullivan on to try the extra point. He gets it up, and it is through. And so the Bombers take a 14-0 lead here in the first quarter. Bombers do seem to be capitalizing this, uh, this half compared to last week. Big pass from Wolkowski to Hamill on the far sideline. And this is just what St. Lawrence didn't want, to fall behind like this early. One forty-three left. First quarter. Bombers lead it fourteen to nothing. As I mentioned last time, the, the Saints are doing a good job with their special teams with that wedge. We'll see if they might break it open this time. Johnson again to kick it off. Joe Carlson and Mike Obel back deep to return him. And it'll be Obel again, this time a little further back around the eight. Drives it up the middle one more time. It's across the 30, breaks by Dan O'Hara, trying to outsprit the kicker, Johnson. And he's knocked out of bounds on the far sideline around midfield. And again, a good return for the Saints. Really not, not good job by the Bombers on the special teams. Really not impressive at all. They're going in and, and stopping the wedge, but uh, he's really getting around the corners on, on the run. So Abel gets around the outside and gives the Saints their best field posi position of the day at the 49. We'll see if Chris Phelps can capitalize and get his team back into this contest. <laughs> Phelps will look to throw on first down. He's got time, steps up over the middle, and it's complete to Lanning, and now it's cut loose, and Penson will intercept it. So a big play goes the other way. Lanning had it, had it knocked loose, Penson grabbed it for his first interception of the year. Outstanding presence of mind there by Craig Penson. Really couldn't expect that ball to pop up like it did. He grabbed it. For a moment, it looked, looked as if St. Lawrence would get a little momentum going with that big pass over the middle, and then it came loose. And we didn't quite catch who made the hit to make it come loose, but Henson grabbed it, his first ever interception as a bomber. And Wolkowski brings out Ithaca. Mullenich through the right side of the line. Gains around five yards. You can see Mullenich really hugging the ball going through there, really not wanting to, enter, uh, to lose that ball. There's the bomber's last scoring drive. It wasn't much of a drive. Eight seconds on the 39-yard touchdown pass from Wolkowski to Hamill to make it 14-0. Before this possession, Neil, the average bomber field position to start was the St. Lawrence 29-yard line. Got the work cut out for him in this drive. Second and five now. Twenty-five 
25 seconds clock down to one. Wilkowski gets it off. Here's the pitch to Molinich around the far side. He's knocked out of bounds. Gain of about three. There. Good lead block there by uh, Chris uh, by Lakata. Number 21. So it'll be third and around two yards to go for the Saints. Wilkowski brings the Bombers out. Good offense, come on now. Third and two. And Wilkowski's going to throw. Pressure's on. Dumps it out for Mullich, and it's batted around and incomplete. Steve Schultz almost picked it off, and then if he grabbed it, he had nothing but open field. <laughs> I think we would have saw a touchdown on that one. Mullich missed the ball. He could have caught it, but uh, at least he did, uh, did do a good job batting the ball back out of his hands and onto the ground. So the Bombers on third and two, surprised with the pass. And it's incomplete, they'll have to kick it away. Joe Williams, second punt of the day. Last week, three kicks, 36 yard average. Mike Harris is deep for the Saints. 30 seconds left, first quarter. Williams gets it away, good kick, and Harris will call for the fair catch at his own 26. Yeah, good height on that one, allowing the Bombers to get right in there, force the Fair catch. So St. Lawrence will take over. Deep in their own territory again. 23 seconds left in the first quarter. Bombers on top of this one, 14-0. Ironically, they looked a little more impressive last week, even though they weren't ahead by quite as many points. They do look a little bit lethargic today. I think it could be attributed to the weather, though. <laughs> Phelps wants to run the option, pitches to McShan. He's trying to beat Feldman to the outside, but no way. Feldman with a good one-on-one -on -one tackle around the line of scrimmage. As St. Louis goes back to running the option on first down after some success throwing it. A little bit surprising. Feldman did a good job holding his ground there, making that open field tackle. It's not an easy tackle. And that's going to be the end of the first quarter of play here from South Hill Field. The Bombers holding a 14-0 lead, and we'll be right back. Second and ten as we begin the second quarter for the Saints. Phelps looks to throw and the blitz is on. He steps up, gets away from Feldman. Now he's going to try and run it and is brought down right around the line of scrimmage. Ralph Jones in there on the stop. He looked a little bit more in command, a little bit more comfortable scrambling and running the ball than running that option. And Jim Bruchak also in there on the play to bring down Phelps. A short gain, of, we'll give him a yard. Third and nine for the Saints. Split backfield now. Abel and McShan. Bombers showing blitz again. Jones jumps off sides. A free play for the Saints. Phelps steps up in the pocket and finds Kurt Lanning, who is belted by Matt Herbst and drops the ball. It was a free play for Phelps. Exactly, free play, so he wasn't afraid to throw it into traffic like that. Hurt Lemming a little bit, but... Lanning may go back to the huddle and say, what'd you throw that one for? <laughs> <laughs> Got caught in the air by Herbst. Penalty will go against the Bombers and bring up a third and four for the Saints. The second time Lanning's went over the mill and gotten belted. 
We had an offside on a defensive team. Five yard penalty, it's still a third down. Third and four now for the Saints from their own 33. Landing is split to the near side. Two wide receivers, Jim Curry and Mike Harris, are to the far side. Back split behind Phelps. On third and four. Phelps wants to throw. Pressure's on. Hatley flushes him out, but he completes it to McShann over the middle. We'll have the first down around the 40-yard line. Good call there. He was wide open right underneath there. Not too much pressure from the IC uh, linebacker. As the linebackers went after Phelps, McShann just kind of slipped in there. Right. So St. Lawrence picks up a first down to start the second quarter. Minute into the second period, Bombers on top, 14-0. Saints looking to get their first sustained drive going. As they still have yet to cross midfield. There's a give to Abel through the right side. Short gain of maybe three yards. Not seeing much progress in there on that run. Bomber defense really stuffing up the holes. It seems the teams are most successful against Ithaca that don't try and power the ball, but rather run uh, outside or little trick type of plays. Right. Second and seven. Phelps wants to throw. Has time. Dumps it off to the tight end. Complete there to Mike Smith who breaks the tackle and it's close to the first down. We have a flag down here at the near side of the field. First time as Phelps had time with that. As Jim Curry and Craig Penson were exchanging a few blows to the near side away from the play, it's going to go against St. Lawrence. That's going to hurt their momentum. We have an illegal man downfield. So a play that got them close to the first down will be called back. And it'll be second and long yardage. Here's the call. An eligible receiver downfield on the offensive team. It's a five yard penalty and we'll repeat the second down. So it'll be second, we'll call it a long 12 from the 37. St. Louis has been hurt by a couple of crucial penalties. Yeah, they have. It's really putting a hamper on their, on their drives. Three receivers in there once again. <laughs> on the draw to McShann, he's got some room across the 40. Close to midfield, near the first down. Brought down by Dan Feldman and Pat Moynihan. Right at the midfield stripe, looks as if he got the first down. And he did. I think that was the first time that they caught the Bombers off guard. Really surprised by that play. That wasn't the power play, that was more of the finesse play. Exactly. Well, Neil, they got a chance to break midfield now. <laughs> Looking pretty close. Looks like they might do it this time. First down for the Saints at the midfield stripe. It's about as close to the center of this field as you can get. Right on the helmet. And Phelps to run the option. He'll pitch it now to Abel, who turns the corner across midfield. Brought down around the 46-yard line by Dan Feldman. That's his best of days. That's the best they've looked on that option play today. Yeah, that option didn't look bad at all. He held the ball, uh, watched Feldman right in the eye, and. Uh, Pitched it out, Feldman got the tackle, but uh, he did a good job on it. At least second and six for the Saints. And this is as good as they've looked offensively this afternoon. Three receivers in there again. Phelps wants to throw, pressure's on, dumps it over the middle, complete to the fullback Mike Abel, who's met and dropped by Lee Byrne. Drops the ball after he was down. Gain of about five, it'll be third and short yardage. Phelps just dumping that one over the line right into Abel's hand. Now here's an interesting call for the Saints. They bring in a tight end set. 
and the two big backs, Duddy Rogers and Joe Carlson. Looks like they're going to try and power it right over for the first down. Third and two from the 42. Full house backfield in there now. An inverted wishbone. And that's McShan, and he's going to have the first down across the 40. A good hole there for Eddie McShan. The main man in the backfield for the Saints had 100 yards rushing yesterday. And looking good here in the second quarter. That was a formation you don't see much in that backfield. No, but they, it provided the, the blocking that it needed to get him right over the line, get the first down. So it'll be first and 10 for the Saints at the Bombers, 38. <laughs> Phelps wants to throw again. Has time, dumps it over the middle to Mike Smith, the tight end, who makes the grab and is brought down by Dan Feldman, a short gain of about three yards. Seeing Phelps get a little bit more time now in his passes. Secondary covering that long route, so just dumps it off to the tight end. Right, for short yardage. I think that's the game that he's comfortable with. Second and seven now for the Saints. And the ball the whole second quarter thus far. We've played five minutes. The blitz is on, and Phelps is hit from behind, and the ball is dropped, and Rob Fitterin is recovered inside Saints territory. Craig Penson came from the blind side and just nailed Phelps, and Fitterin got his second fumble recovery of the day. Strong blitz there. Uh, Penson had some real good speed in there and knocked the ball right out of his hands. Phelps never saw him coming. As we see here on the replay, Phelps drops back and there's Penson on the right side of your screen. Real good speed. Nails him. Feldman in there too and Finneran jumps on the ball on the helmet. 50 yard line. Now here's Lakata on the run. Flags down in the middle of the line. Gain of about four for Lakata. And we'll see what the penalty is. It'll be holding on the Bombers. So this one will be brought back. And this is what looked as if St. Lawrence was getting something going. The bang, the big turnover. <laughs> Took the wind right out of their sail there. So we'll have a hold against the Bombers. We have a holding on the offense. 10-yard penalty. We're going to repeat the first down. Frank DiOrio spelling it out quite graphically for us. First and 20 now for Ithaca. 9.36 left first half, 14 nothing Bombers. As the rain has stopped here at South Hill Field. Wilkowski to run the option, pitch to Lakati, tries to cut upfield, and he's thrown right down by his fellow number 21. Looks like Lakata could have had a few more yards out of that uh, if it weren't for uh, Kenny Hamill missing that block. Tony Filippone with a good head-on tackle there for the Saints. It'll be second and long yardage. The blocking receivers is a real important aspect of this option offense. Van Dyke split to the far side. It's Hamill to the near side of your screen. Wilkowski dumps it over for Hamill. Complete around midfield, and he tries to break through the middle of the line. He's close to the first down. He does have the first down. Hamill with a quick burst of speed on the completion. Good hands and a good call there. Really was open. A couple more steps, and I think he would have had the end zone. Hamill just darted over the middle on that play. As we see on the replay here, Kenny Hamill cuts to the middle of the field. One more step, I think he probably could have broke it. Tear away jersey. He probably would have. Todd Smith managed to drag him down by that number 88. Wilkowski keeps on the option across the 35. Dives forward to around the 33. Did a good job holding that ball. He saw that hole. Got that five, six yards. It'll be second and five for the Bombers. Looking to drive again for a score. 
on top 14 nothing in this one. Second and five for Todd Wilkowski. And he wants to throw. Lops it over the middle for Hamill, complete. And he's hit hard, but he's got the first down and hangs onto the ball inside the 20. Amazing catch, just barely caught the end of the ball on that one with the jump. Jim Kiernan, the free safety, number 46, nailed him. But Hamill managed to hang on, and it's first down Bombers inside the 20. So a powerful pass there by Todd Wilkowski as well. Wilkowski looks much better than he did last week. Looks very confident. Is Malak now split to the near side? And Wilkowski to run the option, and now he pitches it off to Mullen. It drops the ball, and it's loose, and it looks like St. Lawrence has it. And they do. Again. A turnover inside the 20 for the Bombers. It looks like it's number 74, Pat Moylan on the recovery as he just dove on that ball and didn't let go. You see here on the replay, Wilkowski brings it out, tries to pitch it to uh, Molinich. Molinich never gets the ball, hits him in the hip, and drops it. So the Saints get the ball back, a lot of turnovers early in this first half. 7.04 left, second quarter. Farmers on top by 14 to nothing foot score. Three wide receivers for the Saints, deep in their own territory. But Phelps will give to Alba, he's got a big hole through the middle, across the 20, cuts back across the 30, brought down around the 35 yard line. A gain of 22 on the play, brought down by Craig Benson. Again, catching the Bombers uh, by surprise there. Big hole right in the middle, and uh, he just broke it right open. That hole wasn't there early on, and now he's just a lot of holes through the middle Offensive of that line. Offensive line's looking a little bit stronger now, yeah. Again, three receivers in there for the Saints. It's Rogers and McShann in the backfield. McShann gets it on virtually the same play, and he's crunched by Chris Coloca. Kaloka said, uh-uh, not two times in a row. <laughs> Kaloka got all of them on that one. He read that one right. Give him a yard, second and nine from the 35. Running back never likes to be put on his back like that. Has to be important for the Saints to get something on this, the scoreboard going into the locker room. They really do want to do, do something right now to have the momentum going in their favor when they come back in the third quarter. Phelps to throw, blitz through the middle of the line. Now he's going to be sacked. Ralph Jones and Matt Hatley just throw down Phelps. Loss of 10 on the play. Real good rush there. He had a little bit of time. Must have had a good, good coverage back there by our secondary. And there's the disadvantage secondary. of a short quarterback. Phelps only 5'9". When you have guys coming through the middle like that, the size of Ralph Jones and uh, Matt, Herp, Matt Hatley, you just can't, there's nowhere to go. And Bruchak was in on that one too, and he's, he's a tall guy, about 6'4". Bruchak in there for his pass rushing abilities. Good athlete, good speed. Third, and 18. And Phelps looks like he just wants to keep the ball on this play, breaks through Bruchak, and now Bruchak drags him down by the shirt tail for a loss, and it'll be fourth down. Just as we said, the Saints offensive line looked impressive. Those last two plays, the Bombers have had done whatever they please. Exactly. So for Sora, set to kick again. Bombers, nine men up front. Looks like they may try and block this one. Byrne gets a big jump, but for Sora gets it off. A much better kick, taken by Van Dyke around the 32, and he flips and falls there. Good job by Van Dyke backing up on that and getting that ball, not letting it bounce. Good kick fire for Sora, 40-yard punt. The Bombers offense comes on once again. Kenny Amel, three catches this far, 76 yards. Been the big wide receiver. 
here in the first half. 4.33 left. Bombers up 14-0. We'll see if they look for more. Kowski rolling right. Dumps it off for Van Dyke. Over his head incomplete. Not a good pass. Van Dyke was definitely open on that one. He ran a real good route. About six, seven yards uh, deep underneath the linebackers, and he could have got that one for a couple of yards. So it'll be second and ten for Todd Wolkowski. Bombers at their own 33-yard line. Had great field position the entire day. Now Wolkowski on the option, pitches to Lakata, trying to break it to the outside. He's strung out and knocked out of bounds after a gain of about two or three yards. Again, having a few problems out there with the receivers blocking on the cornerbacks. Uh, I think if Van Dyke had, had that block out there, we would have saw a couple more yards out of that one. But as it is, it'll be third, and we'll call it eight for the Bombers at their own 35. Keep play for the Saints to possibly hold Ithaca and get another shot at the ball going into the end of the first half. We do have a little bit of time left. What do you say? What do you say, Blue? St. Lawrence on the blitz. Wilkowski over the middle, completes as a tight end McCaffrey. He's got the first down across the 45, knocked out of bounds at midfield. Good decision there by Wilkowski. Very good decision. Saw McCaffrey there, shallow, but he, he could carry the ball a little bit. Had some room to run. Under the pressure of the blitz, Wilkowski very poised on that. He is looking confident out there today. First down, Bombers at midfield. Wilkowski over the middle again for Hamill on the same play he got a big gain on before completes it for nine yards this time Hamill was not able to break through but he did get the completion right. another good pass by Wilkowski crucial for the Saints to hold the Bombers in this situation yeah they really don't want the Bombers to score in this, this situation here I think it going with a no huddle offense, even though there's a lot of time left, 3.45. There's the give to Mullen, it's across the 40, going forwards around the 35, Mike Kruski in on the stop. Bombers seem to be somewhat successful in all aspects of the game right now. They're, they're passing well, and they still have Molnich to, to go through the line. And Wilkowski's hit the 100 yard mark in passing. And that run by Mullen got the Bombers the first down. Mr. Molinich, again, five yards through the middle of the line to the 30. Mike Warden in on the stop for the Saints. Got to see if Molinich can hold on to the ball now in the scoring position. Along with Joe Lasinski, second and six, second and four, we'll call it from the 29. Three minutes left. Wilkowski looks to throw. To the near side overthrows his man, Molinich incomplete, coverage by Steve Schultz. It'll be third down and four. Clock stops at 2.55. Good pattern there by Molinich. Could have had a few yards. Not quite a first down. Third and four at the 30. A long four yards. Hamill split to the far side. Van Dyke, number 82, is to the near side. Lakata and Molinich split in the backfield. Wolkowski running the option. Dives forward close to the first down. Flags are down, however. And we'll have a holding call against the Bombers. Wolkowski really showing some guts out there and putting his head down and running. Not always sure if that's the best thing for the Bombers, as you see. Losing a quarterback almost every game. <laughs> Holding on the offensive team. 10-yard penalty. We're going to repeat the third down. So that goes from a third and about four to a third and 14. And 
take this guy out of field goal range. 2.45 left in the second quarter. It's like up 14 nothing. We'll see what kind of play the Bombers call here on third and 14 from the 40. Lutowski fakes the pitch, but looks over the middle for Hamill, incomplete. Hamill looks like he had a step on his man, Alex Riley. Ball is just overthrown. And now the punting unit should come on. Hamill's having a lot of success with that slant route, getting open. Lukowski just had a slight problem, you know, threw it right over his head. So Williams will kick it away. 2.29 left, first half. And the Saints have no one back deep right now. No one deep for St. Lawrence. Looks like they're sending 11 men to try and block this one. And they won't get it. Williams' kick is, hits at the five, and it takes an Ithaca bounce. It's going to be down inside the five-yard line at the one. Field position doesn't get much worse than that. Rich Steiner gets on the ball. Now they'll mark it back around the four. First and ten for the Saints. We'll see if they just sit on the ball and try and end the half. Yeah, they really don't want to make any silly mistakes now. Of course, they do have to get a first down to run that clock down. They want the Bombers to get a hold of the ball now in that area. Saints, two wide receivers, I formation in the backfield. It's to go with three timeouts, as does St. Lawrence. They'll give it to McShann through the right side, trying to get his way forward. Gets progress to around the seven-yard line. And now the Bombers will call timeout. As Jim Butterfield trying to get his team the ball one last time here. Seems like they might have time to do it. If they can just hold down this, keep them from getting this first down, uh, the Saints will be in a little bit of trouble. Trying to make them punt out of their own end zone. The rain comes down once again. You can see anything happen with all that rain right now. It's really starting to pour. There's the Bomber defense huddled up as we see the crowd. A lot of umbrellas here at Southfield Field for homecoming weekend. And all the Bomber alumni coming back and saying, ah, yep, weather still hasn't changed. It's a good weather. <laughs> Can't be like last weekend every week. Last week, a direct contrast to this week. Sun shining, humid, 85 degrees. Today it's about 60, cloudy, foggy, and raining. Raining on and off. Right now it's pouring. So the Saints come out. 2-11 left first half. 14-0 Ithaca. <laughs> Phelps looking to keep the ball. Gets around the outside. And is strung out there. Jeff Deacon, Joe Palladino in on the stop around the 8-yard line. The Bombers again will call timeout at the two minute mark. Definitely a pressure situation here for the Saints. Really want to get that first down. It'll be third and five now around the nine yard line. Phelps just tucked that ball under and had no idea of even thinking of getting rid of it. No, he didn't look for pass at all. But he was holding on to that ball tight. Definitely doesn't want to fumble in there. Now you can see the rain really starting to come down here. Yeah, it's pouring out there. It's as hard as the rain has come down this afternoon. This is one of the better playing surfaces in the league. And the St. Lawrence Ithaca matchup seems to draw rain almost every time yeah, it does last year in st lawrence it rained two years ago here it rained and the year before that it rained so the saints come out on third and five Split. Phelps gives it to the fullback. Obel has got the first down and more across the 20 yard line around the 22. Clock stops to move the chains. That was real important for him. Now they're going to be able to eat the clock and uh, 
They may, you know, they may even try and score, but now they don't have to worry about the Bombers getting the ball at least. The Saints will have to kick it off to start the second half. They seem to be in no real hurry here. Clock down to minute 45. Landing splits to the far side. Mike Harris is split to the near side. We'll see if they keep it on the ground. Long snap count by Phelps. He will. McShann fumbles the ball, and it's still loose. And the Bombers have it. The Bombers have recovered. In scoring territory. Matt Hatley looks like he's wrestled it away from Rick Pound. And so just as it looked as if St. Lawrence was going to run the clock out, no. Fumble. And now an opportunity for the Bombers after all. You see in the replay here, Hatley snacking him. The ball popping up. The Bombers get the fumble recovery. Looks like he lost hold of it right at around the line of scrimmage. And he was trying to get it back in when he was hit. And that caused it to come loose. So a minute and a half left. Bombers have it at the St. Lawrence 30 yard line with one timeout remaining. Wazowski fakes the handoff. Play action looking deep for Hamill to the far corner. Hamill's got it, but he's out of bounds. And it'll be incomplete. Hamill was open, just ran out of playing surface. Right. Timing looked like it was a little bit off, maybe. But a real well thrown ball, though, by Wilkowski. Looks like the wet ball played no problems with him on that one. He had a good tight spiral. Clock stops a minute 23 left in the half, second and 10 now. Do you look for the Bombers to, to put it in the air, Neil, or do you look for them to maybe run it and get a little closer for a possible field goal? I don't know. I didn't expect to see it in the air on the last one. There's the draw play. Lakata's got some room across the 25, across the 20, cuts back, is knocked down around the 16-yard line. First down, hit hard by Pat Moylan. He hangs onto the ball. The clock stops to move the chains with a minute 15 left. We really saw a beautiful block out there by Tim Rice, allowing Lakata a lot of running room. And now St. Lawrence will call timeout with a minute 11 left. Sort of a strange situation there. As we see in the replay, see Tim Rice's block. Nakata bringing it out, really stretching that one out. Here comes Todd Wolkowski to talk it over with Jim Butterfield. The Bombers have first down at the 18 yard line. They have one timeout left, a minute 11 left. In the first half, Ithaca on top 14 to nothing. They can almost salt it away, it seems, if they score here. Really could get the momentum going in their way, yeah. The Bombers will have the ball to start the third quarter as well. Everything seems to be going in the Bombers' direction. They just have to hold on to the ball, and make no mistakes, and capitalize on this. And then, uh, that'll show an improvement over last week, at least. He saw Todd Wolkowski talking it over with Jim Butterfield. I look for him to try and score the touchdown. I would think so, yes. A minute 11 left. Van Dyke split to the near side. At, he, that's Ken Hamill to the far side. Wolkowski with the split backfield. He wants to throw. Slips. Now pumps and throws it for Ken Hamill. He makes the catch, but he's out of bounds. He'll be incomplete. We saw some real good blocking by the offensive line there, giving Wilkowski a lot of time. Look for Hamill to the far sideline, and again, Hamill ran out of room. Hamill did a good job on that one, though. His, his route uh, went to the sideline, and then the timing was off because Wilkowski almost slipped there, and uh, he came back to the ball. It'll be second and 10 from the 17. 105 left, first half. <laughs> Plenty of time for Wilkowski over the middle for Hamill, and he drops it. I was ready to say touchdown, and it hit him right in the numbers and bounced right off, incomplete, and it'll be third and ten. Beautiful pass. Hamill was wide open. You see on the replay, man. Hamill on the left, cut the cross the middle on the slant like he's been doing all game, and hits him right in the pads. He slowed up and everything. He was right there. He tried to wish the ball into his hands instead of grabbing it, and 
It bounced away. Third and 10 now, 59 seconds left. First half. Barker, now in there, number 81, split to the near side. Hamill still on the far sideline. Wilkowski wants to throw. Steps up, pressure from behind. Lofts it up for McCaffrey, who makes the catch. Touchdown, Bombers! You can really attribute that to the offensive line, giving Wilkowski an amazing amount of time. McCaffrey doing a nice job on his route, showing that he was open. Kevin McCaffrey with the good over-the-shoulder catch. Wilkowski, the nice touch, lost it in there, and it's a touchdown. You see on the replay here, you see, uh, see the tight end there on the right, McCaffrey. Wilkowski, plenty of time, lost it into the air, and McCaffrey grabs it on the ground. So it's 20 to nothing, Bombers. And Matt Sullivan on to try the extra point. Snaps high, but it's gotten down by Barker. And Sullivan nails it. He's five for five on extra points this year, and the Bombers have a 21 to nothing lead. On a big, big score. However, on that last touchdown play, Captain left guard Tom Finneran came off the field limping. He's going to be attended to on the near sideline. Came off under his own power, but he really was hobbling. Looks like he had a lot of problems there. Fifty-three seconds left, first half. Bombers on top, 21 zip. Got to make sure the uh, Bombers special teams, I'm sure uh, Coach Butterfield wasn't too happy with them last time. See if they changed their strategy at all this time. 21 zip bombers on top here. Late in the first half. Johnston will kick it off again. And Abel takes it around the 10 again. Got some room to the far side through the middle across the 30. Knocked down around the 34 yard line with 47 seconds left. The Saints with three timeouts now, they might want to go to the air. They may give it a shot too. The rain slowed down a little bit now. Two timeouts left for the Saints, mind you. 47 seconds. Kevin McCaffrey catching that last touchdown pass. His first career touchdown. Phelps will look to throw. Has some time. Now rush flushed out of the pocket by Jeff Deke. Completes it to the tight end, Mike Smith, who goes out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Give him a gain of six. Deke did a decent job on that rush, forcing the ball. Todd Oakley knocks him out of bounds. It'll be second and five. Last Bombers drive took only 37 seconds because of the incomplete passes. Five plays, 30 yards, a 17-yard touchdown strike from Wilkowski to McCaffrey. Todd's second touchdown pass of the afternoon made it 21-0. Second and five now for the Saints. 39 seconds remaining first half. Phelps again to throw. As time steps up, dumps it off for Eddie McChenny. Cracked by Joe Palladino. Clock <laughs> continuing to run under 30 seconds and St. Lawrence now whistles and calls a timeout with 27 seconds left in the first half. Number 40, uh, Joe Palladino there. Really a thunderous tackle on that one. It'll be third and five as the pass completion went for no yardage. Third and five for the Saints. But you're gonna see the secondary sort of giving the receivers a little bit of room and allowing the first downs, but not allowing the big play. They're gonna try and keep them underneath them. You may see the Saints go with a uh, Sort of a trick play here in this situation. I wouldn't be surprised to see it. Only 27 seconds left. Both teams have one timeout left. And St. Lawrence has looked better here in the second quarter than they did early on offensively, but a couple of fumbles and an interception have killed two drives. Third and five. 
Phelps rolling left. Ralph Jones trying to press from the outside. Phelps steps up. Now completes it to McShanner at 45. He drops the ball. And it's recovered by Joe Palladino. And now they whistle it. An incomplete pass. That's a tough call. Looked to me like a fumble, but uh, it's not going to change much anyway. 17 Phelps, seconds left. Phelps tiptoeing around that line of scrimmage. Almost crossed it before throwing that ball. He, he didn't know what he was going to do, I don't think. He saw he saw the open man, he saw the open field, and he opted for the open man a little further downfield. But Chan was there. A big hit made on him, so caused the ball to come loose. It would have been a first down and a big pickup. So for Sorrell, kick it away with 17 seconds left here in the first half. Sora just gets it away. Van Dyke takes it. He's got some room to the near sideline across the 35, and he's brought down around the 40 with five seconds left. Good lead block by Nick Ismailoff on that one. We look for the Hail Mary or the praying man. Oh, I think you're going to see Wilkowski go down to one knee. Let it run out. Five seconds left here in the first half. Ithaca on top of this one, 21 to nothing. And in control. Bombers have to be pretty happy with this half thus far. A couple mistakes, but they have scored on a few of their opportunities. Wolkowski's going to fall on this one. That's where the running backs are. Two, 11, go. And he does just that, and the first half will run out. With the Bombers leading it 21 to nothing. They've looked pretty impressive thus far. A lot of those mistakes were, were because of the wet, the wet playing surface. St. Lawrence did look a little more impressive in the second quarter offensively, but really couldn't get anything going. They'd get a couple first downs, and then they'd fumble it or throw an interception. Um, They've got to be a little bit upset with that. Yeah, they're, they're doing sort of what Bombers did last weekend with a, just not capitalizing on, the, on uh, their progress. 21-0 Bombers right now at halftime. Jay Harrow is down on the field with head coach Jim Butterfield. And here's Jay. Thanks, Greg and Neil. I'm here with Coach Butterfield. Coach, got to be pretty impressive with that defense. They're really shutting them down and not allowing the run or the pass to work today. Uh, the defense looks, looks real strong so far. Uh, the only thing that they've hurt us with appears to be uh, uh, some of those passes right over the middle and... Uh, in the intermediate zone as well as uh, the fullback going up inside a little bit but uh, nothing that's been a real problem one one more quick question how how much of a factor is the rain today i'm not sure how much of a factor it is i don't think it's bothering any team specifically uh it's raining on both teams okay coach thank you very much and good luck in the second half also one more note greg and, and neil tom finnerman the um offensive lineman for the bombers had a twisted right knee right on the inside so we may not see him in the second half. Back up to you in the booth. All right, thanks a lot, Jay. And it's Finneran out. The man listed on the depth chart is Ed Hungler, a junior from Manchester, New Hampshire. We may see him to start the second half. And at halftime, Bombers on top, 21-0. We'll be back with a little bit of the homecoming weekend halftime festivities right after this. Back here for second half action, I'm Greg Gavich, alongside me, Neil Brooks. Bombers lead the St. Lawrence Saints 21-0, and will receive the second half kickoff as the rain is coming down in droves. Right <laughs> it's starting to pour down again, yeah. Looks like we lost about two-thirds of our crowd to the rain. Heading back out to the cars. Maybe a little halftime tailgate action. Ismailoff and Van Dyke await Ron Frasora's kickoff. And we're underway. Short kick taken around the 20 by Van Dyke. 
Goes through the wedge in the middle, has to move across the 40. He may go all the way, and he's tripped up by Fristore at midfield. What a wedge by the Bombers. Really, some big guys in there, and they really spread things open. And Van Dyke took the hole right up, almost broke it. Tom Finneran did not return from the locker room after twisting his knee. He's still in the locker room. So Ed Hungler, number 50, takes over at the guard spot. Malinich and Lakata behind Todd Wilkowski to start the second half. And Wilkowski will keep it. Now he'll tuck it under, across the 45, across the 40. He has the first down and more, driving forward. Of course, he's stopped by Jim Kiernan, the free safety around the 32 for a big gain, first down Bombers. Real good block by number 87, uh, McCaffrey, tight end. Really broke things open for Wilkowski. Wilkowski put his head right down and right, ran right into those linebackers, didn't he? Let's get looking to just put this one away here in the opening drive of the second half. There's Molinich to the left side, thrown down. Todd Patton with a good pursuit. Short gain on the play. Not a real good handoff by Wilkowski. Looks like his steps were off even a little bit. He almost tripped up Molinich. Ironically, in the first half, the Bombers only ran for 82 yards and passing, they had 116 yards passing. It's been a long, long time since the Bombers had more passing yardage than rushing yardage in a game. Right. Second and seven. Wachowski <laughs> looks to throw. Has time over the middle. Ken Hamble complete around the 15. Stop made by Rick O'Hara, but not before a pickup of 13 yards. Ken Hamill again just running some amazing pass routes and always getting open it seems. Hamill's fifth catch of the day nearing the 100 yard mark in receiving yards. Bombers not messing around coming out of the locker room to start the third quarter. Up 21-0 looking for more. Looking for some quick points. Wachowski again the throw. Lofts it up for Jim Pino and it's incomplete. He overthrows his man. Yeah, way ahead of Pino on that one. It'll be second and ten. Ironically enough, Neil, in the first half, St. Lawrence led time of possession by nearly eight minutes. Around 19 minutes they held the ball to the Bombers' 11. That could probably be attributed to the Bombers passing so often and uh, really not using the clock that much. Second and ten now. Lakata's been in there all the way with Malinich in the backfield. Malinich on the counter play. He's got room. He's going to walk into the end zone for a touchdown, but there's a flag there's now. There's a flag on the play. And this one will be called back. It's a hold against the Bombers. That's a third one today, I think. Kind of a mental error, actually. The Bombers really don't have to hold. You nice. see here on the replay, huge hole opens up, and I guess big hole on the left side there. Molinich just walks right in. Looked like the hole might have been on number 50, Ed Hungler. Yeah, the holding on the offense. That'll be no good. We're going to repeat the second down. Again, Frank Diorio spelling it out quite graphically. No touchdown. Second and 20 instead. <laughs> There's Molinich to the middle of the line. Forward progress to around the 22. Gain of four, they'll be third and 16. No real hole there, he just waltzed down the line looking for something. Just kept driving his legs and got four yards. Third and 16 now. McCaffrey splits to the far side. Hamill and Van Dyke are split to the near side. Wilkowski <laughs> short drop back and finds Hamill complete on that slant route again, close to a first down. And again, we have a penalty flag. It looks we may have a some sort of penalty against Scott Van Dyke here. An Might illegal man downfield. 
But again, Ken Hamill getting open on the slant. Palmer's coaching staff didn't like that call. I was very upset with that one. Coach Moore over here. <laughs> In the box next to us. They don't understand that call. I don't Not sure point. if I do either. I don't know who was off. For the, for the amount of time, Wolkowski got rid of that ball rather quickly. You didn't think someone had time to get down the field illegally. Eligible receiver downfield on the offense. That's a five-yard penalty. We're going to repeat the third down. So now it'll be third, and we'll call it approximately 20 from the 27-yard line. <laughs> Wachowski to throw again over the middle complete to Molinich and it's going to be short of the first down around the 11 yard line but gets him much closer for the attempted field goal nice little uh, little pass there in the intermediate zone as coach Butterfield talked about the half It'll be fourth and about six yards to go. Sullivan will attempt a 28-yard field goal. Sullivan was short with a 41-yard attempt in the first half. Now one for four on the season. So run the hash mark too, making it a little bit more difficult. Snap down and Barker drops it. Now he's gonna have to run a fake. He's got some room to run around the corner. He gets across the 10, close to the first down. Looks like he might have it. The ball's gonna be spotted at the seven. From here, I think he's gonna be short though. And they're not even gonna bother the measure. So St. Lawrence will take over. As you see on the replay here, Barker rolling out to the right. Just eating it there, just trying to get over. It looked like spot might have been a little bit far yeah. back. It looked like he almost had the first down. Bomber's got a tough spot on that one. So St. Lawrence takes over again deep in their own territory. I don't think that was an intentional intentional fake there. I think he, he fumbled the, the uh, snap a little bit. The wet ball. Helps on the option. Pitches to McShann. Tries to turn the corner. Hit hard by Matt Herbst. And knocked out of bounds. Maybe a gain of one. Good job by Rob Finneran, just holding his zone. McChan's been held to only 30 yards in the first half on eight carries after having an 100-yard day last week against Union. Just shows how, how successful the Bombers have been in the corners, defending the corners and not allowing anyone on the outside. Slip backfield behind Chris Phelps. Short drop, dumps it off, complete to Kurt Lanning. Knocked out of bounds around the 11. Short gain of three, it'll be third and six. Phelps was eight of 11 in the first half for 51 yards. Lanning made two catches for 36 yards. He's been the deeper threat. Kind of a risky pass on that one. You can see the interception ran right in for a touchdown there. It'll be third and six from the 12 yard line. Let's call it third and five to get to the 17. Again, the split backfield. Phelps looks to throw. Now a loose fitter in, and he'll toss it, and it's intercepted by Tom Knapp. Picked off at the 22-yard line as Phelps tried to throw on the run and made a mistake. Yeah, not the best choice by Phelps there. Rolling out, saw that he had a little pursuit on him. And instead of trying to run it himself or just toss it out of bounds, threw it away. Bombers are in scoring territory. Phelps' first interception of the day. St. Lawrence has lost five fumbles. That's their sixth turnover. It's really hurting them. Started with the opening kickoff. And it hasn't got much better from there for the St. Lawrence Saints. Wilkowski to run the option. He's just going to keep this one. Slips, but cuts back across the 20. Gets forward to about the 16-yard line. Good second effort from Todd. Wilkowski's 
sort of an interesting runner. He's got those long legs, but he takes real short steps when he's in there, which really allows him to, to cut back like he did on that play. Oh, it seems to be tough to bring down. He does. Brings the knees up pretty high. Second and four from the 16. Hamill and Parker on the far side. Molinich through the left side. Close to the first down. He'll be just short. He'll be third and a long yard. Looks like the double tight set coming in. McCaffrey and Pino both in there. Lakata and Mullenich has been the backfield all afternoon. Haven't seen Dave Seidel as of yet. That'll be Mullenich close to the first down. I believe he got it. It was close, though. He was stood up and then brought backwards. Depends on the spot. And it's a first down. Just across the 12-yard line, Malinich picks up the needed yardage. It'll be first and 10 from around the 11-yard line. So the Bombers don't need to score to get a first down here. 9.30 left in the third. Ithaca on top, 21 zip. Wachowski on the option. Keeps it and gets forward to around the six yard line. Really got torn down in there by the linebackers. Look, I thought he almost got hurt on that one. Gain of about six. He'll be second and four. The St. Lawrence might be getting a little worn down there on the far sidelines. Defense has been out there for a while. Joe Kimball's club can't seem to get anything going today. A lot of mistakes. Second and four from the five. Two receivers to the far side for Todd Wolkowski. He'll keep it, cuts back, and dives forward into the end zone for the touchdown. Wolkowski really has got a head on his shoulders, doesn't he? I mean, that really that definitely wasn't the play. He was supposed to roll out further to the right. He saw that hole and just stepped right over his blockers and right through. So Wolkowski takes it in from five yards out and puts the Bombers on top 27-0. Wolkowski's having a real good game today. Todd Wolkowski carries it in for his first touchdown of the season rushing. Barker to hold for Sullivan on the extra point try. Snaps down and it's up and through. So with 8.42 left in the third quarter, Ithaca is now on top 28 to nothing. I think you might start seeing some younger guys getting in. I heard, heard the coaches up in the box calling for Steve Levy, the center, number 52. He'll be in there next, next offensive series. I think you might see some younger guys in there this, this uh, quarter now. With a 28 nothing lead, the Bombers looking to get some other players some playing time. Well, I guess there, there's the first half stats. At the half, it was 21 nothing. Both teams had seven first downs apiece. Bombers on top in rushing yardage. St. Lawrence got nothing going on the ground. As passing, 116 yards. Total offense, the Bombers with a big advantage again. And that was five lost fumbles killed St. Lawrence in the first half. And with the interception, six turnovers today. Hobble will take the punt at the, take the kickoff at the five. He tries to cut it to the outside, breaks through the tackle, across the 30, and knocked down there. Number two. By Doug 25, Lamar. Darienzo almost got him. Ended up having to lunge for him with an arm tackle and not succeeding. So the Saints will have the ball at their own 32, first and 10. Phelps remains there in court in there at quarterback. Last year the Bombers led in when these teams met 28 nothing, and the Saints managed to put 14 points on the board late to make the score a little bit more respectable. 
The give is to the first man through, Duddy Rogers. It's a gain of about three. Slow handoff in there. Caught him standing up. Last bomber scoring drive, only 22 yards. On five plays, 250 it took. Wilkowski with a six yard touchdown run. Bombers with no real long sustained scoring drives because the field position's been so great. Right. Let's go, Blue, come on now! Helps on the short drop. Looks over the middle, has his man, but it's intercepted by Lee Bird. And he's got some room to the near side. Now he's knocked down around the 32 yard line. Turnover number seven. Phelps looked like he was just in a, in a box there trying to throw out of it, and he couldn't see where he was throwing to. Hopelessly just threw it up, and Lee Byrne picked it off. We saw a little bit of speed from him uh, going right to the sideline, get some yards out of it. Jim Curry was open, but Phelps overthrew him, and Byrne picked it up. You see off. on the replay here, Phelps will drop back. Drops back, it's a real tough rush there. Byrne picks it off, runs it up. Jim Gibbons in there at quarterback now looking to throw and is thrown down in the backfield. Good stop made by St. Lawrence by Mike Santagaga. There's a tough name. <laughs> Santagada, a sophomore from Rome, New York, tackles Gibbons in the backfield, a loss of four. Lakata in there still with Molinich. There's the draw. Lakata tries to cut back and is brought down after a short gain of about two or three. It'll be third and long yardage. Good fake by Gibbons. Had a couple of the defenders going on that one. Third and about 11. Bombers with some second stringers in there. Steve Levy, as you said, was the center there. Mark McQuaid and Ed Hungler are now both in at guard position. Rice and, fin Rice and Marcus remain the tackle on third and 11. Gibbons looks to throw, and it's incomplete. It's going to be a flag down. Not too much question about that one's going to be. Brian Beicher, the cornerback just knocked Ken Hamill flat on his face as he tried to cut over the middle to get that ball. And it'll be an automatic first down. Looked like that was almost out of frustration more than anything. The ball was already over their heads. I think the reason we might see Evan and Tim Rice in there right now is because last week they were not quite in enough shape to stay in the game and right now there might be a little bit of conditioning for them. Pass interference, on a defense, spot foul, it's an automatic first down. It'll be a first down for the Bombers as they look to score once again. <laughs> Sophomore quarterback Rob Sendlensky warming up for St. Lawrence on the far sideline. We may see him enter the game. Gibbons gives to Lakata and he goes nowhere. Stood up right at the line of scrimmage. Really not a good give on that one at all. Brent Brown was in there on the stop for the Saints. Got a player, St. Lawrence player down. Looks like 74 there. Pat Moylan slow getting up. And he'll trot off the field under his own power. See, Gibbons not really, in the last two plays anyway, not really playing his usual game. In fact, he really shouldn't have given the ball on that one. He should have held it himself. There's no running room. Gibbon steps up in the pocket, looks over the middle, ball is intercepted. Steve Schultz makes the grab, now looking for some room to the near sideline. It's across the 30, cuts back, and is brought down there by Steve Levy. Gibbons threw it right to Schultz instead of the receiver Van Dyke. Right in his hand. Not much you can say about that one. So the second Bombers turnover of the day gives the Saints the ball back in their own territory. Phelps remains in there at quarterback. 
5.46 left third quarter. Two wide receivers split to the far sideline. Help run the option. Turns it up himself, has some room across the 40, across the 45 for the first down. That's the best that option's looked so far today. Yeah, we saw some speed there from Phelps. He has a good defense with some second stringers in there. Now Matt Haggerty at the nose guard positions in there. Jim Bruchak moves to outside linebacker. Joe Palladino in there at strong safety. First and 10 for the Saints. Rain continuing to fall. Sides offense. Mike Smith jumped a little early on the near side, the tight end. Can't help St. Lawrence any on that one either. So the offsides will march it back. St. Lawrence had only three penalties in the first half for 30 yards. It seemed to be crucial penalties. It's going to be first and 15 for the Saints at their own 40. Phelps looks to throw, steps up. Now kind of flips it over to McShann, who's hit by Dan Feldman and knocked out of bounds. Now that was a weird play. Yeah, not much of a gain on that one. Looked like he tried to get a little running room, saw some, some big fellas running at him. I think it was Matt Hatley. And uh, he just tossed it over to his, his near running back. And we'll see if they credit him with a forward pass or a lateral on that play. It's like, I don't want it, you take it. <laughs> a little bit of overhand pitch is what that would be. Second and 12 for the Saints. Help, <laughs> time to draw, gives to McShan. He's got a hole across the 45. Brought down around the 49-yard line. Stop made by Todd Oakley. And we got another flag. It's going to be against the Bombers, I think. A personal foul, a late hit. There's a mental error you really don't want to see right now. Bombers are way up in personal fouls. For a personal foul on a defensive team, 15-yard penalty can be a first down. So St. Lawrence with one of their deepest penetrations in the Bomber territory of the afternoon. They'll have it at the 36-yard line of the Bombers with 4.50 left here in the third quarter. And a little bit of success there with that uh, draw play. First and 10 for the Saints. Phelps had trouble with the snap, but does get it and hands it off to Mike Abel. Who gets a short gain of about two. Got that ball a little bit slow and uh, allowed the Ithaca defense to really pile up on there. It'll be second and eight. As the rain is just pelting down. Steady flow of fans heading to their cars. <laughs> fans leaving almost as quickly as the rain's falling. Here comes the blitz by Lee Byrne, and he was right there waiting for Phelps to give the ball to Abel. Lee Byrne's just having a blast out there today. Just crashed right through the line and did some damage to the quarterback. Untouched was Lee Byrne on that one. Here comes the replay. Lee Byrne straight through the middle and just brings him down. Gets up and celebrates. I don't know if Byrne knew which guy to tackle there. <laughs> I'll throw both of them down. Why not? Third and 14 now for St. Lawrence. Jones almost jumps off sides but gets back. Now Phelps is going to be sacked again. Matt Hatley, Jim Bruchak, and Joe Palladino all in there to throw Phelps down. 
back in his own territory, and the Saints will have to punt. Bummer uh, secondary really allowing the, the D-line to get in there and sack him. He did have some time there, but a good all-around defensive play. So Ron Frasora comes on to punt. Five kicks in the first half for Frasora, 31-yard average. Is Malaf and Van Dyke again back deep. <laughs> low snap, short hop by Fasora nicely. It's away a low kick. Van Dyke will take it at the 20. Has some room across the 30. Flags are thrown. Todd Oakley's number 45 is going to get called for a clip here. It's okay. Leads this series 12 games to 6 over St. Lawrence. The last St. Lawrence win was here at Southfield Field in 1983. 24 to 12 win for the Saints. We have a clip on the return. Fourth to distance to the goal line. First down. The Bombers will start with their poorest field position of the day around their own 13 yard line with 2.20 left here in the third quarter. That might actually be good for the Bombers if they can really drive it out. And Waste a lot of time here. That's what they want to do. Ismailoff in there, split to the near side. Gibbons still at quarterback. He'll give to Lakata through the middle. Breaks across the 15. Junior Steve Levy really uh, blowing a hole in there pretty well. Tom Halloran in on the stop for St. Lawrence. Second and five. Van Dyke and Ismailoff both split to the far side. Split backfield behind him. Gibbons is thrown down on the option. Jim Limerick in there to make the stop. A loss of two. He'll be third and seven. And Tim Rice comes off the field gingerly. Looks like he might have an arm or shoulder Yeah, injury. that does look like a shoulder. He's hanging that right arm down a little bit. Hopefully Jay Harrell can get us to report on that. Brian Orzelak comes in to replace him at the right tackle spot. At the left tackle spot, excuse me. Third and seven for the Bombers. One time! Gibbons play action, dumps it off complete to Molinic. He's got the first down and more. Thrown down around the 30-yard line. Stop made by Tony Filippone, but not before. Molinic picks up 15 yards in the first down. Nice, nice soft pass there from Gibbons to Molinic. A good route by Molinic. And a good block by Nick Ismailoff out there, too. He drops back. Molinic out in the intermediate zone. There's Nick. He had already blocked that number 21. Held him up pretty good and allowed that play to work. Gibbons' first completion of the day sets up a first down for the Bombers. Gibbons to Malinich through the middle. Stacks up. It may be a gain of two. Stop made by Walter Zeman in there at linebacker. Seeing those younger guys on the Bomber offensive line struggling a little bit more with the St. Lawrence defensive line. So it'll be second and we'll call it eight for the Bombers as the first quarter, is, the third quarter is running down. Five seconds left. And that's going to be the end of the third quarter of play with the score, Ithaca 28, St. Lawrence nothing, and we'll be back after this. <laughs> Fourth quarter set to get underway here. Bombers leading St. Lawrence 28-0. Jim Gibbons in there at quarterback. Runs the option, pitches to Lakata at the far side, cuts up field across the 40, he's got some room to the outside. Now it's brought down around midfield. 
After a gain of 16, good running by Lakata. Gets him the first down. Tony Filippone again in on the stop. Beautiful open field uh, blocking by the tight end uh, McCaffrey out there. Really made that play work. Bombers around midfield. On the first you watch play, here. Pitches it out. As you can see, McCaffrey at the top of your screen holding him off. Giving him an extra 10 yards on that one. But we have a flag. We have a holding against the Bombers. <laughs> Maybe McCaffrey. It's tough with those open field blocks. You see the hand. So they'll mark this one off from the spot of the foul, which is the 50 yard line. We're going to repeat the second down. So, in the exchange of everything, the Bombers pick up about five yards with the penalty called. It'll be second and two. Jim Slayton brings in the play, now split to the near side, number 85. Another Floridian from Pompano Beach. <laughs> Gibbons to throw under extreme pressure, just fires it for Popovich and it hits Isbaloff. But they're going to say he trapped it. Wow. He was looking for Slayton and Isbaloff happened to be behind him and almost made the catch. Gibbons just about to hit the grass on that one and I really just tossed it up in vain. I thought, I thought it might even be intercepted. But uh, he actually did have Isbaloff in mind and he almost received it. It'll be third and two now for Ithaca. It's like Coach Butterfield wants to see how Gibbons can throw the ball. He hasn't really had a good chance to look at him this passing game. Third and two, Gibbons again to throw. Dumps it off for Mullinich, he's got it. It'll be a first down around the 44 on the short dump off pattern. A lot of success with that so far, at least in this half to Mullinich, that little dump as he drags across underneath the linebackers. First down, Bombers at the 44. Looking for their first sustained drive for a score today. Started deep in their own territory on this one. <laughs> Would be a good boost for the younger guys to to do that, to bring out a sustained drive and actually drive it all the way down the field for a touchdown. First and 10 for the Bombers. <laughs> Gibbons will run the option. Keeps it, now pitches it, throws it out of bounds. Not good option play there. I mean, it was a good pitch and it could have worked, but well, it wasn't a good pitch. <laughs> it was, uh, really didn't look at all before he pitched that one. Gibbons had a gain of about five before he pitched it, and they'll mark it at the 48 where it was pitched out of bounds. Gain of three. After all that, Gibbons was being chased hard by Jeff Way, a freshman defensive tackle, 6'2", 285. Now here's the draw. Lakata has trouble with the handoff, but gets across the 50 around the 47. Gain of about Four, it'll be third in short yardage. Lakata showed right there. It looked like uh, the footing is a little bit loose in the middle of the field there. But the uh, South Hill field is in great shape considering all the rain we've had this afternoon. Yeah, you really couldn't expect it to look like that at this point, but uh, we do see a little bit of spots of mud out there. Not many, but a few. Third and two. You kind of close space. And Gibbons, wanting to hand it off, takes it back and cuts across the 45 and gets the first down. Kind of put it in Mullins' arms and said, nope, you're not going anywhere. I think I'll take it back. And not a bad idea with Mullins because Mullins will just blow a hole open for him and he can just follow him. And it's a first down on the five-yard pickup for Jib Gibbons. First down, Bombers. <laughs> Gibbons to throw, has it batted down incomplete. And we have a flag down. And 
Looks like we're going to have an ineligible receiver. Lethargic out there with a big lead and uh, with quite a bit of time left. Uh, I, I think what they want to do is. is just the forward pass. See the right the offense. The loss of down. Five yard penalty. Second down. I think they should really be trying to grind out the clock and and, and just keep moving the ball and keep a good morale and, and so you're up for next for the next game next week. <laughs> Tenth play of this drive. Bombers have had it for four minutes and 30 seconds as the fog is setting in over here at South Hill Field. You can't see Cayuga Lake. They have a little trouble seeing the field. <laughs> Gibbons to keep it out of the option. Now pitches to Lakata the far side. He's got some room across the 40, turns the corner. Just knocked down around the 37. Another flag. A lot of penalties at this point. Walt Zeman again on the stop. Look, the Bombers might be getting a little bit lazy out there right now. Have to pick things up a little bit. It's a hold against the Bombers. They'll bring this one back. From the spot of the infraction. I am holding on the offensive team. 10 yard penalty, repeat the second down. So after the mark off from the spot of the infraction, it's basically a wash. No yardage loss, no yardage gain. It'll be second and 15 all over again. Fog's really setting in now. You can hardly see the visitor stand. Jim Slayton brings in the play. Gibbons looks to throw down deep for Slayton in the double coverage, and it's intercepted. Jim Kiernan picks it off and has some room to run across the 40. Flags down everywhere, brought down around the 47-yard line. As we have some illegal blocks on the return, but Gibbons throws his second interception of the day. The interception should still stand. stand. Looks like Gibbons maybe shouldn't have thrown that ball. You see on the replay here, Gibbons throws it way up. It's a pretty good pass, it's just not to the right guy. 